Welcome to Studio Biology. In this video, we are going to discuss some differences between the hypogyne, perigyne, and the epigyne. First one is thalamus. Thalamus may be conical or convex, but it is not expanded. In perigyne, the thalamus may be disc shaped or cup shaped or flask shaped and the periphery is expanded to form hyponthodium. In epigyne condition, it is usually flask shaped and hollowed out. Next difference is of Androperianth. So Androperianth is born below the level of ovary in hypogyne around or above the level of ovary. in perigyne and above the level of ovary in epigyne. Next is the terminology for ovary on the basis of position. The ovary is said to be superior. superior ovary. Here ovary is said to be either superior or half inferior ovary. Here ovary is said to be inferior ovary. Next is Fusion of thalamus with wall of ovary. Here no fusion is there in hypogyne and perigyne. But in epigynous condition, the thalamus is fused with the wall of ovary. Next is the visibility of pistil. In hypogynous condition, pistil is totally visible because superior ovary is there. In perigyne, pistil may or may not be visible. Because if superior ovary is there, then pistil will be visible. But in case of half inferior ovary, it will not be completely visible. And in condition of inferior ovary, that is epikinous condition, only style and stigma are visible. So these are the various points of differences in epigyne, perigyne and hypogyne conditions. Thanks for watching this video.